Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. We thank God for this day. We thank God for this opportunity. Let us go to the word of God from Hosea chapter number six from the New International Version of the Bible. You'll find these words in Hosea chapter number six, verses one through six. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us. To pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Therefore, I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. Then my judgments go forth like the sun. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we pray that you would have your way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus we pray and we say thank you. Amen. Uh, from the scriptures that has been read, I would like to use for a title this evening, Come and Let Us Return to the Lord. Come, let us return unto the Lord. My thesis statement is simply this. When we return to God, he will restore us. When we return to God, he will restore us. Hosea, Hosea the prophet, had what we call a tough assignment. Hosea the prophet was one of God's finest, but he was challenged to live a life that was different from most prophets. Hosea is the first of the minor prophets. Uh, he is the one that prophesied in Israel during a season of material wealth, but spiritual poverty. Sounds familiar? Because of this, God called him, Hosea, to do something very costly. He did it in order to send a striking and unforgettable message to the people of of Israel. Hosea the prophet was informed by God Almighty to marry Goma, a prostitute. This would give the people a visual demonstration of their unfaithfulness to Almighty God. Hosea's words were to help the people feel the grief of God who responded to their rebellion like a husband with an adulterous wife. In the same way Goma had betrayed Hosea, Israel had betrayed God. Hosea vividly Ill illustrates the law of sacrifice. He lived with pain and with frustration. He lived with disappointment and with sadness. Hosea had a tough assignment. 
It was Hosea who was betrayed by Goma. It was a sign of how Israel had betrayed God. In order to fulfill his divine calling, Hosea had to pay a huge price. At his own expense, Hosea married Goma and watched her drift away like water flowing down the streams. She drifted from her marriage time and time again. Walking away from her husband as he was waking up at night alone, trying to figure out where she was or where she might be, who she might be with. It was a bitter pill to swallow for the prophet Hosea. We can only imagine his pain his hurt, the heartbreak, and disappointment. Hosea was charged to live with his wife in spite of her deception, her lies, him being hurt over and over again. Hosea had to explain to his children that their mother would not be home that night. And watching her public humiliation as evil men auction her off day after day, night after night, her body for lustful delight, God had mercy on Hosea. God gave Hosea the strength to stay with Goma in spite of. Because of Hosea's relationship with his wild and unrestrained wife, the prophet spoke to the Israelites about their spiritual state. He could do so with empathy and with passion. Hosea knew firsthand how God felt about spiritual adultery. He knew firsthand how people who could love you could walk away from you and abandon you. He knew what it was like to tell his children a sad story over and over again. By the way, Hosea had three children, so they say, by Gomer. The Bible says that Gomer had the first child. By Hosea. Hosea gave him a name. But when she had child number two and child number three, the Bible does not say that Hosea was the father. Can you imagine? And Hosea named his children, and their names meant no love, no mercy, and no acknowledgement of God. It's sort of like us today. Some of us have no love, no mercy, and no acknowledgement of God. Like Goma, we are played with our, our bodies and allowed our bodies to be given over to other people. We've sold ourselves. We've given up what we thought was precious in a relationship and allowed others to take hold of us. Like Goma, many of us believe, hallelujah, that God will only punish us or God will only deal with us for a short season. And so many of us believers, Christians, have drifted away from God. Christians have fallen to deceptions, riches of the world, lying and gambling. We're like Goma. We are just like prostitutes. We've given ourselves away to entertainment, the latest fashion, the nicest automobiles. Others drift away because instead of 
calling on God and investing more time in prayer and in the word of God. They have motivated themselves by nice homes and nice and good paying jobs or by greed. God is angry. God is upset. God is disappointed. But God, like Gomer, God still loved us. God, like Israel, still love his people. God, hallelujah, still has a plan. God loves us more than we know, but some of us have left our first love. We have drifted away because of the desires of power, prestige, and positions. But I came by to remind you that the Bible says in the book of Hosea to the children of Israel, come, let us return to the Lord. I came by to remind you this Lent season that it's time for us to return to the Lord. The Lord has a better way. The Lord has a better path. But we must make up in our mind to return unto the Lord. The people of Israel are like us. They did not understand the depth of their sin. They had not turned from idols, regret their sins, or attempted to make changes. Lord have mercy. They were headed for self-destruction. They thought that God's wrath will last only a few days. Lord have mercy. Little did they know that their nation would soon be taken into exile. I came by to remind you this evening that God, hallelujah, does get angry. I came by to remind you that God does punish sin. I came by to re remind you there's good news in spite of what God will do to us unless we change from our wicked ways, unless we repent and turn to God. Yes, God is a good God. He's an awesome God. But I came by to let you know that God is a merciful God. He does forgive and he does restore. It's in the text. The Bible says, hallelujah, to an unrepentant nation called Israel. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces. We wonder why we go through what we go through. It's because we have prostituted ourselves. We have turned our backs on God. We have drifted away. But thank God for his mercy. Come let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces. And the good news is, but he will heal us. I came by to remind you that if you've drifted, but you come to the reality that you need God. If you come to the reality that God will forgive you and that God can turn your life around, that God will have mercy on you. The good news is this Lent season is that God will heal us. Hallelujah. The Bible says he has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. Aren't you glad that even though God has allowed you to be wounded, that God will come to your rescue. God will have mercy on you. And God will heal your wounds. The Bible said after two days, he will revive us. The third day, he will restore us. In other words, we can drift away. We can be down, but we don't have to be out. God still cares about you. God still cares about your grandchildren. God still cares about your nephew. God 
still cares about those who have drifted away in your community. God still cares about those who've drifted away from your church. God still cares. He will tell your neighbor. He will restore us. He will revive us. He will bind our wounds. Aren't you glad that we may live in his presence? God is saying to us that we can get it right. God is saying to us that he still loves us and he's still trying to draw us back to him. You might be going through right now, but because of the mercy of God, because of the love of God, because of the patience of God, you have another chance. God is able. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him as surely as the sun rises. He will appear. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. That trouble don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You got to acknowledge God. You got to know like I know that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Why? Why, Reverend? Why? That, why will we turn? Why will we come to the Lord? Because God loves you. And because God will heal you. Because God will bind up your wounds. Because he will revive us. And he will restore us. Why? Why come back to God? Why? The good news is, he says, I love you with everlasting love. He says, I have drawn you with everlasting love. I came by to remind you that God has everlasting love. That's how Hosea was able to hang in there. That's why he didn't walk away. That's why he didn't commit suicide. Because God was merciful. And God was holding his hand. And God was guiding his footsteps. Come, let us return to the Lord. Why? I'm so glad you asked. We serve a merciful God. We serve a loving God. We serve the God of God, the King of King, and the Lord alone. He offers forgiveness. He gives us an opportunity for repentance and renewal. If we have been broken and battered, he still offers us hope. Come and let us return to the Lord, the same God that saved you, will strengthen you. Come, let us return to the Lord, the same God who has loved you, will lift you up, the same God. Come, let us return to the Lord, hallelujah, the same God who has made you, will continue to make a way for you. Come, my brothers and sisters, come, no matter how far you've drifted, you have another opportunity. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal. Throw your head back and shout glory, hallelujah. God will heal you. God will restore you. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that he didn't leave me where I was. I'm so glad that he didn't leave my mother where she was. I'm so glad that I can put my hope in Jesus. I can put my hope in the master of the universe. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's Mary's little baby. He's the carpenter's 
son, come, let us return unto the Lord. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. That's why you can come, hallelujah, and bring your burdens. You can come and bring your problems. You can come and bring your troubles. You can come and bring your sorrows. You can come and bring your wicked ways. Because God is able. Is there anybody here that know that when we come to God, that God will welcome us with open arms? I'm so glad he died for me. I'm so glad he died for you. I'm so glad that early one Sunday morning that he got up because death could not hold him. He got up because the grave could not hold him. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That's why I compel you today. I encourage you today to come unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Give him some honor. Give him some glory. Has he ever done anything for you? Shout glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come. Let us return to the Lord. Our problems, our shame, our burdens, our wicked and evil ways are not too hard for God. The scripture says, acknowledge him. Once we acknowledge him, things begin to change. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come, come, come. Let us return to the Lord. The doors of the church are open. Wherever you might be viewing from, God is able. If you're in Jacksonville, God is able. If you're in Titusville, God is able. If you're in Tallahassee or Miami, God is able. If you are in Little Rock, Arkansas, or in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, or in New York City, no matter where you are, God is able to revive you, to heal you, and to restore you. But you got to come to Jesus. This is your opportunity. Let us know. God will save you. God will restore you. And God will bless you to be fruitful in your labor. But you got to come. Hallelujah. Praise God. God, we praise you. We thank you. We pray your blessings upon those who've heard on tonight. We pray your blessings upon those whose hearts were pricked. We pray your blessings upon those whose minds have been changed. We pray your blessings upon those spirits that has been revived. We pray your blessings upon all of those who believe that the best is yet to come. We pray that somebody is saved, somebody is delivered, somebody is set free. And God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And thank you. Now may the grace of God and the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with us all here now and forevermore and the people of God say amen. amen. God bless you.